Hi there, welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. In this podcast, I interview successful business leaders and industry experts to help you grow your business. I truly believe that sometimes a single insight can completely change your business directions and allow you to achieve your business goals. In this episode, I interviewed Kristen Iris from CI Communication Strategies. You know, she's an award-winning ghostwriter and a development uh, editor. She's been helping business leaders for, for so many years on, on a book project. So if you're a business um, a leader, you know, you have a wealth of knowledge. Uh, when I started Encompass Business Technologies, I wish somebody had written a book on how to build a technology company, how to run a technology company. I, I could have avoided so many mistakes uh, and, and wasted so much time and energy on, on a very, very simple uh, items early on in the business. So if you are a business owner, um, whether you build a company or you run a, uh, you have an ins- operational insight on how to run a company, I hope my discussion with the Christian in this episode can uh, at least encourage you to consider writing a book and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with the world. You know, think about it. This could be your greatest gift to our next generation. So if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, enjoy. Hi guys, welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. Today I have uh, uh, Kristen Iris uh, from C, uh, CI Communication Strategies. Um, you know, um, Kristen, you've been helping business leaders, you know, uh, on, on writing books or, or putting a content together. I'm looking forward to learning from you, looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much for time today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, you know, this is one of the topic, you know, I, if I look at my fellow business leaders or fellow business owners, they have a wealth of knowledge, you know, and it, it never published in a book. So, you know, I'm hoping that uh, with our discussion, we can encourage somebody to write a book and at least put, put the experience in a book so somebody else can learn from it. Uh, yeah. so, so talk about what do you do at the CEI Communication Strategy? How do you help our business leaders? Yeah, sure. The, the first thing we really start with is because most people approach me with the idea that they want to write a book or people have said to them, oh, you have this wealth of knowledge, you should write a book. So the first thing that I like to talk about is kind of looking at it and saying, okay, but why do you want to write a book? Is a book actually the best way for you to reach your intended audience or solve the problem? One of the really funny things that I have found is that often people will say, oh, you should write a book. But if you ask them a follow-up question of when was the last time you bought and read a book like what I would write? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. You know, so then it's like, okay, would it be better to reach your audience in a different way? Um, And then once we decide if a book is the right way, then it's identifying who is your ideal reader? What problems are you trying to solve? You know, what's your unique perspective and the value that you have to offer? And then we just kind of go from there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a big commitment, you know, taking on, this, you know, taking on and writing a book, right? So it's a time commitment, time, energy, and also the cost of it, right? So it's a big commitment, somebody writing a book. So what, what kind of commitment, how long does it, you know, generally people uh, see, and where do you see people get stuck, you know, uh, you know when they're writing a book? What, what is the biggest challenge they have when, when you're writing? Is it a thought process? Is it simply putting a work to it? So, Yeah, that's a great question. I think there are there are two things. Uh, business leaders who want to write their own book, they get stuck with underestimating the time commitment that it takes. And then also, the more the more experienced they are, the deeper their well of knowledge, they start to suffer from analysis paralysis because they have so much content that they could put into the book that they they don't know how to make the decisions of what to set aside and what to put in. Mm -hmm. So often they'll engage with me kind of in the middle of the process or at this point where they're just like, I don't know what to do. I have, I have all this stuff and they just kind (laughs) of just, they just dump documents like, okay, but I don't know what to do now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, building a business is a long process, right? As they're going through experience, they're not going to memorize everything, right? But when you sit down and it's trying to go back and, and put your thoughts together, it's a lot of work and they may have a lot of experience they've gone through, right? Some of the business leaders have been probably doing it for most of the life building business and they decided to write a book. It's, it's a lot of experience, a lot of, a lot of learning curves, right? So putting all those thoughts together, experience is a challenge, definitely, right? Absolutely. When you have to condense 20, 30, 40 years of knowledge and experience with clients into, you know, potentially thousands of clients that you need to weed down into maybe 
10 of those to use as case studies, then yeah, it's, it's incredibly difficult to try to jam that into 50 or 60,000 words in a way that stays focused on what the, the reader needs. Mm -hmm. How does it help in a business? If somebody's trying to build a company, they're trying to grow a business, does, does that investing time in a book will, will definitely you know, help in, you know, to get, get a word out about the business? How, how do people use that? Is it use a marketing tool or is it use that as, you know, just to build, build a credibility in the market? Yeah, so I, there's a lot of advice out there that says, write a book to build your business. I actually have a little bit of different advice on that because, and maybe it was because I was raised with so many books and I have such like almost a religious feeling about books and authors is that I think that you can use a book as a calling card, but if somebody reads the actual book, it's very easy to tell who actually is an expert and who is not. So I think that if you write a book too soon, yes, you may be able to build your business rapidly to a certain point, but your book now becomes a liability because once you try to level up to a different level of client, mm -hmm. you have on record in a way, for lack of a better way to say it, you're like your ignorance is on record. So I would rather see somebody wait and write a book when they have been in the business a lot longer and have really have a lot of results to show because before that you can do, you know, you can speak, you can, there are lots of other ways you can blog, you can have whatever. Mm -hmm. There are so many other ways to, to get your value out. And it's not that you don't have value. It's that, do you want to go on record? Because like you said, a book takes a long time to write. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Most, most business people are self-publishing or going the independent publishing route. So they're making a considerable investment up front. Is, that, is it the right time in your business to make that kind of investment? Mm -hmm. Would it be better for you to, to do something else and then later document that in a book when that book is going to have a much longer shelf life? Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Very interesting. You mentioned that um, sometimes you read a book and you see this, this, there's no, there, you know, you can almost feel that, that you know, there's no lot of, uh, you know, weight in the books, right? You know, there's yes. a lot of, a lot of the same, you know, over and over. It's been mentioned somewhere else and it's just taken and it's somebody's, you know, made a point. But when somebody adds their personal experience to it and, and they're a lot more knowledge to it, it becomes a lot more valuable. I, you know, I definitely go through a lot of books and, and uh, you know, I can you know, see that when you read a book and there's nothing, you're just skipping through the pages and, you know, because there's no, uh, well, you're not adding value to people who are reading it. Yeah. And so and that's where it's like, well, if you're not adding value, if you're not adding to the conversation, then why are you writing a book? And, and sometimes the the true, true answer is that it's coming from a place of insecurity or ego. People want the author, they want to be called an author because that has weight and, but they're just not yet ready. Or they feel like without a book that they're not a legitimate business, which is absolutely false. Yeah. You are a legitimate business if you know, you're, you're profitable and your clients are experiencing results. Mm -hmm. So a book is not this magic thing. It's just one more tool that you can use to add value to the people that you're serving. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have something value to add, definitely you can, you can get your message to so many people very quickly with the book, right? So it's much effective way of communicating with a lot of uh, masses, you know, just, just writing a book, but definitely well, is it? Well, not really, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, okay, so yes and no. Um, more and more people, like we are getting, we are very busy, and particularly for, for business people writing a book, and if you are writing a book to speak to CEOs, CFOs, you know, managers, decision makers, you have to consider that they are, they have some serious time constraints and mental bandwidth constraints. So if a book is going to take 10 hours to read from start to finish, that's a significant commitment that you're asking from a reader when they could go to YouTube and watch a TED talk or even a one hour talk that um, 
you know, a Google talk that, that these high level authors do, they could go and, and watch a couple of those things and really get most of the substance of a book mm-hmm. in those short little increments. And that's another reason why it's like, make sure that if you're going to write a book, then it's going to be something that, that readers are going to want to keep on their desk mm-hmm. as a reference. Um, so obviously I'm in the publishing industry. I, I want people to write books. I love books, but yeah. it's not always the best way to communicate your message, especially if you have a very uh, a niche audience. Mm-hmm. So what, what kind of uh, any, any area that you help people, uh, Christine, is it a friction books or is it any, any, any area you tap into or is just uh, all other area? Does, it doesn't really matter just as long as the process of writing a book is there. Yeah, no, I do specialize in working with business people, attorneys, medical professionals that and, and academics, things like that. Um, I do a little bit of fiction, but primarily books that are focused on really educating readers deeply about a subject or solving acute problems that people have and books that I help clients design them to be something that readers truly will want to keep on their desk because they go, oh, that book had a lot of value and I'm going to want to go back to that book again and again Mm -hmm. and refer that, that book to somebody else, even if they don't read it from cover to cover that it's easy to navigate it's high value so they can kind of pick and choose a la carte from the topics Mm -hmm. um of course we want them to read it from cover to cover but yeah yeah Yeah, Um, i know maybe for that reason i see that you know most of your books are amazon bestseller or new york times bestseller or or washington post bestsellers i think all your books are in the bestseller and most of them are in the bestseller category no, I want to correct you on that. No, no. Most books don't ever reach those kinds of things. Um, so I see, I, I saw in a yeah. site somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I do have my clients have gotten very good results um, and those are from my list of results. But uh, that's another thing that authors have to understand is that it's very it's very difficult to hit the New York Times bestseller list and, you know, these bestseller lists. Mm-hmm. So that also goes into why do people want to write the book? Uh, Often that people will come to me and when we're having our initial conversation and I say, what are your goals? And they say, well, I want to be a New York times bestseller or or, I want to get on to fill in the blank high profile Mm -hmm. television show. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, that's almost a, we're not a good fit because that tells me that the focus is not on, How can I provide the most value to the client? But I want the spotlight on myself. But it also demonstrates that that the person doesn't understand how how hard it is to sell books um, Mm -hmm. and how hard it is to, you know, get it that fast. Mm -hmm. So we always want those things. And of course, we do everything we can to make that happen. But the reality is that uh, we have to be have proper expectations. Mm -hmm. You mentioned selling a book. You know, let's talk about commitment that I know writing a book is one uh, one one aspect. Second aspect is going out and and promoting and selling it. How much commitment will you know know, people need to be aware of that? Hey, listen, what it takes to sell a book. I heard somewhere that it takes 10 times more than writing a book, that much time and energy. What are your thoughts and and, and, uh, what do you what do you uh, teach people on that? 100%. Okay. (laughs) I mean, it is really difficult to write an excellent book, but it is a million times harder (laughs) to sell that book because like we said, we're competing with people's, you know, we're competing with free online resources, video, all of these things. Um, I will say that my clients who get the best results as far as book sales go, hire a publicist mm-hmm. um, and a book publicist, somebody who knows how to get authors in front of on the list that they need to be on, like, um, you know, for book clubs and top memoirs of 2020, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, this is again, why you don't want to write a book too soon is 
you really need to have some kind of a way to have your your loyal following who are excited and I think also that have a sense of appreciation for the the value that you've provided for free. So when you do have a book, even if they're not necessarily a reader, that, yeah. that they would buy the book just as a, hey, listen, yeah, I got 30 bucks. I've gotten 30 bucks worth of value from, from this person. I'm going to buy this book to have as a reference mm-hmm. uh, and a reminder of all the things that I've, I've learned from them. Um, but yeah, book sales is tricky. And that's where going back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, there are two different ways of looking at writing a book. And one yeah. is not to worry about book sales, that you're just going to use it for your clients or your prospective clients, right? Okay. And you yeah. don't care about book sales. It's a loss leader. Okay. It's, it's providing value, but it's not about the book sales. And then there's the other way of looking at it that is about the book sales. So if, if you're mm-hmm. wanting to go that route, it's a much harder, a much harder route, you know? Yeah. That's like a, almost setting up a new business because now you have to uh, build a plan around it. You have to That's- go out and market it. You have to go sell it. It's like a whole business you're setting up. It's a new business that you're setting up just as selling a book. So that's what your goal is. Yeah. And you have to have, yeah, you have to have that marketing plan built in because there's kind of a lead up with, to launching a book, doing things in the right order, especially if you're working with a publicist and you want media attention. Mm-hmm. Often you need to have a, about a three month lead up. There's like a six month window, three months before and three months after mm-hmm. is when you're really hot for media attention. And so there are just some timing things. And so the busier you are, if you're running a business and all of that, you have to think about what are my other responsibilities to my clients here, to my employees, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Do I also have time if I want to be on the bestseller list or, you know, get Mm -hmm. big attention for the book? Can I really manage all of those things and do everything to a level of excellence that people expect from me? Mm -hmm. Well, for the last couple of years, people had a lot of time on their hands. They probably will think it. They had enough time to think it through the ideas if they... I, I talked to a lot of people like, and you know, they sped up their, their, their uh, you know, book projects. What do you see the changes that, did you see that, did you see the lot of books coming in the market, uh, you know, um, in, in the next few months as, as we're finishing the pandemic or, or, uh, or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it was funny when the pandemic hit, you know, everybody was panicking and, you know, uh, rightfully so. But those of us editors, writers, ghostwriters, man, we had so much work, we just couldn't take it all in, you know? Um, So I think it was a really good thing in that respect because it did allow people the space and the freedom to really sit down and think about what they wanted to write. So Mm -hmm. yes, over the last, even the last year, there has been, there have been a lot of of people who have published their books um, that they wrote in the pandemic. Then there's also, I've seen people who got started, but then got to that critical point and it stalled because they, they just don't know, you know, how to, how to move forward. Yeah, definitely. When you have a lot of time on your hand, you know, what's, when you're sitting home, the best thing you can do is start putting some ideas on a paper. I mean, it's much easier to, to go through. I've probably read a lot more books during this pandemic than I generally read, um, you know, cause I started a YouTube channel. Um, but I've been going through a lot of books during spending, but it's much easier to read when you, when you are, you know, uh, t- you know, at home instead of uh, traveling all the time that you don't have a lot of time to, to assume that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, business leaders who've been working, what do you recommend? How do they approach it? If they, you know, a lot of, I, I know a lot of business leaders, they're sitting on a wealth of knowledge that, you know, they've, they've built the companies. Um, I'm always encouraging, you know, including myself as well. I haven't written a book, but I'm in, also trying to encourage myself indirectly as well. So people who haven't written a book, what do you recommend? Where do they start? You know, how, how do they approach it? You know, uh, they should start thinking about it. Yeah, I think there's two things to consider upfront. Is do you is it important for you to write the book yourself? And then, or do you want to work with a collaborator or a ghostwriter? Um, so the benefit of working, the benefits of doing it yourself are 
I think you are, obviously you have automatic access to all of the information, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also, I think that there is a personal satisfaction benefit that we can't underestimate that aspect of it. Uh, then, then the question becomes, do you really have the time, the energy, the skill set to do that? Mm -hmm. um, but th then the other thing is many, 70% uh, or more nonfiction books are actually ghost written. So yeah, then it would yeah. be like, okay, do you want help developing the book? Or do you want someone like me to step in and do a series of interviews, like do a data dump, figure out what the what's your message, who you're trying to serve, what their, pro, you know, what their acute problem is, how you can mm -hmm. solve it, all of that. Um, and then the, the ghost writer or book collaborator, I use those terms interchangeably, is going to help the author do a table of contents, structure the book up front, and then do a series of interviews and just get a bunch of that information that's very focused on what the, what's determined to be that core message of the book, the arc mm -hmm. of the book. Uh, and then that professional writer sits down and actually does the writing of it from the interviews and things like that. So it's, it's the author's, it's the author's book, mm -hmm. but they're just kind of outsourcing the, the task of writing it. And then, then at the end of that process, they come together and the author says, oh yeah, okay, change these things, you know, move these things around. Um, so those are kind of the two general routes that people go. And it's really just a matter of what's your budget, what's your time, your energy constraints, uh, all of those, those things. But there's a lot of help out there, what you mentioned that, you know, if somebody doesn't have a time, there's a lot of assistance out there, you know, you can use the help and, and, and uh, you know, get the project because this is the biggest gift, you know, um, when I started a channel, you know, there's a lot of books written by industry experts, you know, you can talk to them, you know, but there's hardly books written by business uh, owners. When I started a business, I was I always look for books. Hey, somebody built a company like similar to what I'm trying to build a company. If they had a written a book on that, how to build a company, it would have been much easier. At least I can avoid a lot of mistakes because there's a wealth of knowledge in that, right? But I, yeah. hardly, I, I didn't find any books. So um, for that angle, I'm always encouraging business leaders to you guys already built the companies, you know, there's a, there's people coming following you and, and they, they, they're going to make the same mistakes you're making. But if you can document the mistakes you made and how do you avoid that in the future, it's the biggest gift you can give it to the, the, the list and the readers. Yeah, I agree with you. And so there's this, I don't know how new it is, but it seems like it's, it's newer and it's a kind of a business memoir is how I describe it. Okay. So it really is taking the arc, following the arc of a person's journey through building that business, the, the failures, the successes, it, and it, where a lot of business books are written more from a, a distanced view of here's the problem and this is how you solve the problem and you, you walk through it this way and there might, they might use case studies from clients, which I think is wonderful, but yes, you're absolutely right it doesn't get to the core of, you know, all of us have had those days where we are seriously in our pajamas. We haven't showered for five days. Yeah. We've had some kind of thing go wrong with a client and we're, we're just paralyzed and we, we, we can't not do what we want to do. There's no other option for us, mm -hmm. but we also are feeling like, this is the end of me and this is the end of the business. You need, we need to have those books on the market to go, oh, okay. It's not just me. This mm. is normal, right? And I think sometimes people write too much from a distance. And I agree with you that, that those books that are kind of, it's one thing to, to read a book from somebody who's like, you know, Lee Iacocca or some these people who have these huge success, right? But the reality is that's not what most of us are. And quite frankly, most of us don't actually want that level of, you know, scrutiny and, mm -hmm. you know, responsibility. So I love what you're talking about, that that zone of the market. Then the, the matter is, how do we get our book, that message to the people that need it? Because that's that's yeah. a tough thing. Yeah. 
Well, you know, there's there's a lot of books on a certain segment. You know, when you build a company or when you build a business, not only you go through the business challenges because that's that's what you sign up for, but at the same time you gotta go through personal challenges. You know, the you know family you know uh, uh, challenges or financial challenges. There's so many different challenges that you go through. Um, generally speaking, when you find a book, it's either on a, one of the topics, either financial challenges or business challenges. But business leaders or business owner who built a business, they can talk about all those challenges because you know it's part of the business building process that you have to go through all those challenges. So um, somebody to share the journey. Hey, you know, when I was building a business, I, I had these challenges, and this is what I gone through. Not only business challenges, but all the challenges around you um, could be family challenges, it could be financial challenges, it could be just you know. Um, the hard time you've gone through or made into decision process challenges so many challenges you got to deal with um you know so if somebody get up put those uh, you know challenges you got to hey listen this is how you navigate those some of those challenges right yeah well and that also speaks to kind of going back and saying why am i writing this book who is going to be the reader of this book because a business owner who's writing a book like what you and i are talking about that's a book that's going to appeal to other business owners not to potential clients necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where identifying who your ideal reader is going to be is really important. And yeah, and the service that, that you want to provide. And I think it just occurs to me now, I just wonder if maybe the reason there seems to be fewer of those business memoir type things that focuses on more of that, the personal journey is because it's very challenging to identify what your ROI is going to be on that effort. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just speculating there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, how about taking a book and turning into Audible or, or audio version of it? You know, is, is that where you, you know, uh, is you still recommend business owner read those books that you know how, how does that process works that you, f you finish the book first then you become a, make it an audio program yeah i think especially for business books that's a really smart thing to do just because again people have less and less time to actually sit down and read a book at least with an audio book you can multitask you can be driving you can be on the train you can be doing lawn work, whatever it is. I think you really expand the people that you can reach if you translate it into an audiobook. But it's really important to consider what kind of features are, you're putting in your your written book, mm -hmm. because I think that graphs and visual types of images are really great in a print book because it communicates a lot of information very quickly and it's easy to reference but you then have to think about oh if i'm going to turn this into an audio book how am i going to translate this visual information into something in an audio book so you might just have to re tweak the book just a little bit to make it friendlier for the audio format. So you just kind of have to think strategically and tactically about some of those, mm -hmm. those things. But absolutely, I think for business books, when you're factoring in what your budget is, I, I do think that factor in an audio book. And then the next question is, do you narrate it yourself? Or do you have somebody, somebody else, else. <laughs> yeah. narrate it? Now, I'll just, I'll just jump in and give my opinion on this. Sure. Um, I personally like it especially a business book or a memoir when the author narrates their own book and i'm less concerned about whether that person has a you know a, a quote unquote marketable voice or whatever that doesn't matter to me because what i what i'm doing is connecting with that person on a more personal yeah, level building a trust and connection yes there. so yeah. So my thought is if you can spare the time to narrate your own book and just, you know, get a little bit of training to help you out and work with a qualified mm -hmm. sound engineer director on that. Uh, I personally, that's my personal thing is right. I think that that's a, that's a good choice to make. Yeah. I know I consume a lot of books uh, with, with Audible working out or whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm always listening to the books. 
And uh, you mentioned that's a good point that you know when when uh, there's a, something visual that that aids that are provided in a book, I usually end up uh, you know getting a hard copy as well, so I can I can see that that you know graphs and whatever they provided. But yeah, you know, for, uh, for me, it's, it's much easier to consume that Audible books because, uh, uh, you know, no matter what you're doing, you can still listen to the book, you're working out, uh, whatever they're doing, you know, you can go through much faster in the uh, content. Yeah. And it almost turned into a training program, you know, if you're listening to business books, right? So you, you can just uh, learn from it over and over. You can play that whatever you want to play. And you bring up a good point. I think it's interesting that I I'm with you. Uh, well, I prefer written books, like hard copy books, but I do listen to audible books sometimes too, but I almost always, I would say 95% of the time, if I purchase an audio, an audio book, I, I buy the physical copy because something will stick in my mind. You're a runner. I'm a runner too. So, you know, be, be out on a run and you hear something and you go, Oh, um, I want to look that up and I want to underline that in the book and put a sticky note on it to yeah. go back to later. <laughs> so I need to have the physical copy of the book to, to do that for reference later. Cause I'm not going to re-listen to an audio book where I will go back to a physical book. That's a, that's a preference yeah. for me. No, I think for that reason, you can make a notes on an audible, you know, definitely need a physical book to make a notes. And you know, if you want to go skip through the stuff later on, but yeah, for that reason, physical books makes a lot more sense. Okay, so talk about your background, Dr. Kristen. How did you get involved in, into uh, you know writing books and helping people out uh, in, in in a book writing? I think, like most business people, I fell backwards into it. Okay, I I started writing my first book when I was I don't know between eight and twelve, and uh, I quickly realized that it was derivative at best and plagiarized at worst, mm -hmm. and set it aside. But then when I got into college and beyond, I was focusing on medical anthropology, had no, no designs on, on being a writer, although I'd gotten a lot of good feedback about my writing and things. Then when I got out, I realized that, uh, so I went back to school, I'm a late bloomer, I got my degree in my early 40s. And I was invited to come to grad school and I realized that if I took that, even though I loved medical anthropology, if I took that track, it was going to put me, it was going to force me down a track like for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so I, I took a step back and I just, that thing of just wanting to be a writer was just tickling me. And I knew I also could not work for anybody else yeah. in the business <laughs> world. Yeah. <laughs> like most of us, yeah. there comes something and you're like, wow, I'm unemployable. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I just started to kind of experiment. I, I wrote a piece that got published in a magazine and then I edited something for a friend and got good feedback on that. And I was like, wow, I really love this. And then I just decided, wow, you know what? I'm going to commit to this and then you just practice your, your skill and you, the more you work with clients, you realize, oh, I don't work well with this type of client, but I work really well with this type of client. And, you know, these are the paths. So I just kind of, I just kind of found my way. I think like, like most of us do through uh, trial and error and then started editing books. Then a project would need deeper level rewriting and, clients were really busy. So I was like, well, yeah, I could do that for you. And oh, got good results. So that just kind of evolved into ghostwriting, book collaborating, and that kind of thing. And, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of the one of the area of Alma is interested, you know, uh, understanding is, you know, the writing books or, or, or either writing or reading, you know, it's really good for your mental health, right? So if I if I skip a few days, you know, I didn't realize early on, uh, when I started, I got into you know reading a lot more books and, and writing. But as as I as, you know uh, on, on a daily habits, I started writing and, and reading books. I, I realized that you know if I miss few days, it's like I'm missing something um, all the time. It's very good for mental health, especially for me. I'm not sure for other and what I'd like to uh, see your thoughts on that. Do you find do you get that feedback that is very good for you for for your mental health that either writing or reading books? Yeah. I can say like for myself personally, I think one of the things for me reading books, especially like the ones we're talking about where the author is 
is really authentic and shares more deeply is that, you know, I'm, I'm an introvert. I call myself a gregarious hermit. People okay. don't believe how much of an introvert that I am. Um, okay. So books for me, I think, help me to see a reflection of myself and help me solve problems in an intuitive way by watching other people go through them. Um, so their books and, and the authors of those books are friends to me. Uh, yeah. And I think that maybe that's why it's good for our mental health is that we feel a connection that we may not have the time or energy or personality or whatever to go out and make those connections yeah. one-on-one -on -one, because it takes a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the writing side of things, I think the mental health aspect of that is, first of all, when you're committing something to paper or typing, forces you to think deeper about whatever you're committing yeah. to paper. So it really helps you solve your own problems faster, you know, find solutions in your business, better ways of doing things. But there's also a sense of satisfaction that comes when you've pushed yourself through a difficult writing challenge and done something that the amount of satisfaction that, that you feel at the end of a writing project, truly the only other time that I can think of an equivalent is running or I used to race triathlons. You do something really hard and you concentrate your effort for so long. And man, when you're done, it's like, it's that runner's high. Wow. There's a writer's high that happens that I yeah. think is good for mental health. You know, a few years back, I started blogging. I started writing articles. So, you know, we were uh, trying to uh, build up a company. So whatever the challenge we were facing the, the week before, I would write a blog on the challenge and how to, how to uh, you know, fix, you know, uh, uh, overcome the challenge. When I started a blog and I thought I was trying to help my team, you know, here, here's the challenge and here's how you guys need to get over it. But as I started writing those, those challenges, it, you know, amount of clarity I got from writing those challenges, you know, I got really focused on those challenges and it, I got so much clarity on a business, you know, in my conversations got better. So I kind of didn't stop that, you know, I said, well, I, I can't stop this. This is, this is helping me quite, you know, um, mm -hmm. on a totally different level that I can clearly see the challenges and I can explain those challenges to business, you know, of the leaders much easier after writing about it than just simply going into it. So I gained so much clarity by writing that, you know, that's what I got used to, you know, I, you know, um, one one uh, blog every week I was writing at that those those uh, those days, but amount of clarity. So I was writing blog for myself. You know, at the end, you know, all the blogs I was writing not for uh, my team anymore or for 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 businesses. I was writing for myself just to gain a clarity. So every time I'm not clear on something, I would just write a blog about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it provides so much clarity and, and uh, you know, because you, when you're writing about it, you can almost solve the problem. And I wonder a lot of business leader probably writing a books just to just to deal with their own problems and, in, in, you know, instead of dealing with the world problems, I guess. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. It's kind of like in the psychology world. They thought they talk about me search rather than research that a lot of people go into that field because they're, yeah. <laughs> they're curious. They want yeah. to solve. I think so, too. But you also bring up something that I think is really important. And that is that when people write a blog and they do it consistently over a period of time, they write a better book because it takes, it takes practice to find your unique voice. That is not just your writing style. Do you use shorter sentence sentences versus more complicated sentences? your word choices, your phrasing, those kinds of things are voice. But I think there's there's more to it than that. And that is when you can look at, I bet if you go back through, and you might have already, gone back through all of the blogs you've ever written, then you start to see themes and threads that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize it at the time. But now that I look at it holistically, I can see that this particular aspect is really important to me. And those are the things that, that you can carry over into a book and you're going to be much more targeted and much more authentic than you would be if you've never done an exercise like that before for any length of time and you're just trying to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Very interesting you brought that up. So when, when I recently, because we write so many emails on a daily basis. So initially when I started blogging, it was more of an email format. It was more from education standpoint. Hey, you know, this is the problem. This is how you want to deal with it. But I think as I got deeper in writing about those blogs, I almost start looking at through audience standpoint. Hey, what is this person who is reading blog? What is the next thing this person wants? What's the next thing? How do I deliver more value to this person who's already gone through this two paragraph and the next two paragraphs I want to make sure I deliver value for this person. So I almost started thinking in terms of value and instead of educating or trying to uh, get a point for us in how to solve a problem. So I think you, you change your focus, uh, whatever style you want to pick as, as to add, you know deliver, deliver value instead of uh, you know educating in many different ways, right? So I think you, you, you're right that you change your style as you, as you go through it. Yeah, and you know, one thing I started noticing mm -hmm. when I first started blogging was I blogged more out of frustration than I did from a place of value. So I would, I would think, I'm consistently seeing this problem. People need to know about this. And man, when I would read those blogs, I was like, oh, gee, many Christmas. <laughs> like, and then I had to flip it and go, okay, well, you know, what a person needs isn't always what they're looking for and what they want. So you have to get into the head of what are people looking for and what they want. Yes, you have to deliver, you know, more of that, um, reality based, hey, you need to be thinking about this news too, but you have to do it in a way that's more palatable. And that's kind of baked into the value that, that the reader is looking for. So it's all those things. And I don't think, you know, and that was even for me as somebody who was making a full time living as a writer, as an editor, making those mistakes. So what you can execute for someone else still takes practice to execute it properly on your own. And that's where writing and anything creative is such a weird thing because yeah. it's very specific to whatever you're doing and you have to learn it in this mode. You can be an excellent email writer, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to write an excellent book, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I started that blog, I was, uh, you know, you know, first I will write some points on a board, you know, and then I will, you know, because I got to do brainstorm how to how to construct my ideas, how to go to thought process and, and how to uh, and, and I will make a point of that. Then I will, you know, go in my process. I kind of build a process for me what I was doing every week. You know, first I will draw it, you know, then I will write a points, then I will get turned into a paragraph. I got to the point where, you know, what I writing was not that important, but walking people through how I came to that conclusion during my, my brainstorming, that was more important. So yes. I started blogging about, hey, this is how I came to this conclusion and walking them process, hey, this, this is the point. Because if I have taken a time to construct those ideas and gone through those, those uh, you know, getting a thought, a thoughts together, maybe other people haven't spent time doing it. And if I can walk them through, it's much easier to digest for them instead of me just telling them how I arrived to this conclusion. So I kind of started enjoying that process of it, simply just walking them through step by step. You know, this is how you, you come to this conclu conclusion. I love that because that is actually, I think, where the value is, because I think one of the challenges when we're writing a book for a general audience, or we're giving advice to a general audience, is that we have to be careful as consumers of that advice, that that is, advice is coming from one particular perspective. And if you don't understand what led up to this perspective, yeah. You cannot decide if that advice is the best advice for you. It, it can be fantastic advice for one person and be the worst advice for another person. And the consumer doesn't know that unless they have a little bit of insight into the backstory of how you came to that. Then they can recognize themselves in your journey and say, yes, okay, yeah, this guy thinks like I do. He is in a situation like I am. He has similar goals to what I do. That advice is advice that I want to take. Or, okay, good, good, good. That doesn't apply to me. Good, good, good. I'll think about that later. Mm -hmm. And instead, what a lot of us tend to do, and, and I think especially the more expert level we are, 
and it, the more we are perceived as experts by our peers, we default to this is the way to do it. This yeah. will solve your problem. Yeah. Well, no, there's there's more to it than that. That's why I love interviews. I think that interviews are great because you get you get the nuance that that you can't get in other types of presentations. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is the process of how to so, you know, solve a problem is a lot more important than simply solving a problem. Hey, follow me. I'm, this is how you're going to do it. But mm -hmm. walking them through how you got to the point is a lot more important, I guess. You know, it gives you a lot more context. Yeah, I mean, especially if you were talking to business people as the audience, because I think that successful business people are creative and they are deep thinkers. The idea that you could hand a 19 year old a book that says how to build a whatever, $2 million shoe business in a year. Okay, you could have a step by step process of how maybe one person did it, mm -hmm. but it does not take into account the constraints, the talents, the opportunities that that this individual has. So if we're just taking advice on a Yep. Check, 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 check. And expecting to get to a certain result that that doesn't exist. You're not going to have that long term success. So if you can understand how people think and arrive at conclusions, you're going to be able to to think about your own challenges and be a much more critical thinker and arrive at the conclusions that are right for you much faster and much better than you would if you just followed a yeah. blueprint. Yeah, no, I think, uh, and, and a lot of business leaders have that knowledge, you know, um, you know, not only business owners, but business, business leaders. And I've seen recently in a few business leaders I know, um, even they, they're writing a book, even for internal staff a lot, right? So, um, you know, one of the person I know, they, they built a, you know, uh, they write a book, how to hire for, you know, because they've had a challenge in their own company, uh, how to how to look for a new talent, how to build a team, how to hire. So so he wrote a book on on how to how to build a team, and and the book was especially for oh, for his staff. But they end up selling it outside as well. So I think it just uh, what problem you trying to solve? These people, have, business leaders, have a wealth of knowledge, and 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 going through it and walking people through how to solve those problems is is a gift um, that you know you, you can't uh, get it anywhere else. Absolutely, and the beauty of books is that they do have the ability to be around long after we are gone. Yeah. And, you know, yes, online media, other types of media has, especially on the web, like it's going to be documented somewhere for all eternity kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But how accessible is it going to be? And I can, you know, I can, my son-in-law and I were talking the other day and, and I can hand him a book that has been beneficial to me that is a different experience, a different exchange of knowledge and a, a gift um, that's different than sending a link to something. Um, it's just a different thing that I think a book has the ability to speak down the generations in a, in a meaningful way that other forms of communication don't. Well, if you want to give a gift, uh, you know, to, to your kids, you know, what's better gift is write a book on how do you, how do you, how do you live then? How do you build a, you know, the, the business you build and give it that to your kids and, and uh, that will stay with them forever um, or next generation after that. Right. So we're yeah, interested. They don't think sometimes to ask certain questions. So we have yeah. the opportunity to document some of these things that they may never ask us and, or we might never actually even think to, to tell them yeah yeah put that in a piece you know the, uh, the work in a book and and they have it forever mm -hmm. even even long when we gone um yeah so any any word of advice for business leaders who are sitting on a on a on an edge of you know they, they thought about it writing a book but they never started you know um any word of advice you know where can they start you know how do they you know writing a blog is one of that item we talk about it you know they can start writing a blog that's a good start what other uh, what else they can do to prepare themselves or or uh, and we can encourage them to hey you know take on this project yeah I think that writing a blog is a great way to start and it helps you test ideas of what can be in there I'm also a big fan of index cards so whenever I think of a book project or you know a film project or something for myself I have 
I have index cards and I write all the ideas. What's a potential chapter or a scene or a subheading of a chapter, a topic? And I just have all of these sticky notes. And then I will occasionally just kind of spread them out and go, oh, I see a theme here. These four things don't fit the theme. You chuck those out. And then you then when you see these things and you go, oh, this this definitely needs to go in there. And you just kind of do this brainstorming process. That's kind of the first level that's part of writing the book, but it doesn't feel like sitting down in front of a blank screen. And then you can organize your table of contents and your subheadings from there. I'm a big fan of outlines and having a really solid plan for your book. And then once you have your outline done, you can start thinking about, do I want to write this book by myself? Do I want to engage with a collaborator? And if you're thinking about a collaborator, you could engage with them earlier as well. But having some kind of a rough outline yeah. go into that conversation is a good thing. And it, and it gives you kind of your to-do items if you want to do it yourself. I see. So as you go through, you know, when you, when you finish the outline, uh, Christine, as you go through your experiences, do you add more stuff to it or, or more topics to it? Or you just stick with the whatever the outline is? So I really like a solid structure going in, but writing is a creative process. So it never ends up being exactly like it was in the beginning. As you write, as the book evolves, it takes on its own life and you're going to see, oh, I actually need to move this down or I need to move this up. Oh, actually, this really isn't important, but what really is, is I need to bring this in. So you have to have, um, go into it with a structured mindset and with discipline Mm-hmm. but do not become so analytical and disciplined that you kind of kill the the muse and the magic because then the book okay. will end up being flat and preachy. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Any any message you want to leave, any final message you want to leave for audience who are listening, you know, um, I'll definitely encourage, you know, somebody who's uh, who's been thinking about a book, I will encourage people to hey, reach out to you, have a conversation with you, connect with you, and, and uh, see, you know, uh, if you're making the right decision, because it's a big commitment, writing a book and, and then going out and selling it. So talk to uh, experts, you know, before you, before you, you know, commit time to it, um, reach out to you and have a discussion with you. Any any final message you want to leave for audience uh, if they're thinking about, a write, you know, going, going on a journey of writing a book? Yeah, you know, I think it's in line with what you just said. I think go out, find a couple, maybe three to five people that that resonate with you have a conversation with them. They should not be trying to sell you their services in that call. It should be just a get to know you and advice giving call. That's going to set you on a path of deciding. It's going to help you make some decisions about which direction you want to go. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have it in your mind later of, oh, okay, that person and I really got along. I think I could work with them later. So then when you get to the point where you're ready to engage with a professional, you've already you've already started to establish Mm -hmm. some kind of a working relationship and you know the value that they have to add. But I think just like when somebody starts a business, the advice is go and talk to several people who have done this before and are experts Mm -hmm. so that you don't go off on a tangent that you have to correct later on. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a time-consuming process, right? You don't want to make mistakes and, and trying to recover from mistakes because that's going to take so much time. And, you know, then you probably don't end up finishing a product because, you know, you just wasted time on many different wrong items, right? So experts like you, you know, there's so many blind spots. You can have, you know, you can help business leader who are trying to write a book on, on the right path instead of making the mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it's just a matter of asking the right questions. Why do you want to do that? Why does that... Why does that path seem like the way that you want to go? Why, 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 why? We, we're we trained to ask questions that help authors get to the right answer that's right for them, just like a business coach. Yeah. Um, so they can just avoid a lot of heartache and go into the process with a lot more clarity and confidence. Writing is a is a confidence game. And if you don't go into it with confidence, it's going to show up in your writing and also your experience writing the book is going to be more miserable than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last thing you want to do is write a book and then you'd realize, oh, I could do better in this. I could do better in this. You don't have to have those feelings, right? You want to put right. the best effort in and not having a second thoughts later on. Hey, I could have I could have done better on this area a little bit. Right. Yep. Okay. 
Very interesting. Where can people connect with you? How can they reach you? And, and how can they have a, a conversation with you? Yeah, the best way is my website, kristeniris.com. And the spelling of my name is wonky, C-R-I-S-T-E-N-I-R-I-S.com. Or LinkedIn. Uh, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. But I have a blog. There's a lot of information on the blog that's meant to help answer people's questions I up see. front. And always, always happy to talk to people in a just a friendly conversation uh, because I love books. I love the publishing industry. I love authors. And uh, it's exciting just to connect with people and and just talk shop. That's yeah, that's yeah. fun. You know, it, it's, a, it's a great wealth of knowledge. I've been reading so many books because there's so many, you know, author comes on a channel as well. So before they come in, I got to go through their books as well. So, you know, it's it's a, it's you start enjoying after reading a few books. And now I'm at the point, you know, let's, I can if I don't read a book for, for a few days, I'm kind of missing it. I need that. I need that energy. I need that and that information and, and knowledge. Oh, really quick. I will say one other tip that I have is sure. definitely read broadly and deeply in whatever type of book that you want to do and identify what you like and don't like about specific books. Oh, this book had an excellent table of contents. I really found that helpful. I this see. book had graphics that I really liked. How can I, how can I shape my book in a way that I would enjoy reading it and and be maximize it? So engage with that critical thinking about the actual product itself and the package that it is, beforehand, mm -hmm. and that's also going to going to really help focus you and help you make choices. Um, that make it easier. So you want to pick the best out of all, you know, whatever you read, to pick the best out of all the books. And, and, and uh, that's a yep. recipe for success. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I want to appreciate your time. Thank you so much for time. I learned so much, you know, I'm definitely thinking about a book, but you know, um, but I learned, uh, you know, what, what, what to do and you know, how long the process is, you know, definitely is that back of my head, I will encourage all the business leaders who are watching, um, you know, reach out to you, you know, and have a discussion with you. And uh, if that's uh, one of the items in your to-do list that you want to finish a book and, and uh, I think uh, conversation, you know, um, they should re definitely reach out for a good conversation and, and uh, take it from there. Well, thanks so much, Gurmeet. This was so much fun. And uh, I always learn a lot too. So this was, this was a great way to spend my morning. <laughs> good stuff. Thank you so much for time. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hi there. Thank you so much for investing time with us and watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this discussion. For next episode, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and send your feedback. Until next time, have yourself a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.